afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us today in this special session about community colleges. Our title today is All You Need to Know About Community Colleges. And uh, that is the objective of the session today. We want to explore the different uh, pros, the different cons that you can find when exploring a community college. What is a community college? So maybe a term that we listen to often and maybe we need to know a little bit more about it. So we'll begin with a brief introduction to what is Education USA. And then we'll jump right into our guest, um, Chicago Walker, she is the acting director in San Mateo Community Colleges of Silicon Valley and also an alumni um, from Guatemala, Vivian Marcos, who is a former international student um, in, in the system of, of community colleges of San Mateo. So it's a great pleasure to have you with us today. Thank you for joining us. Um, a couple details on logistics include that if you're joining us here on Facebook, feel free to share your questions directed to Q&A Mariana, uh, who is going to be gathering the questions so that we can ask them towards the end of the session. And if you're joining us on uh, Facebook, please share your questions in the comment section and we'll gather them through there as well. And this session will be recorded in, uh, will be available on our YouTube channel and our Facebook, so you can use it as a resource later on. So beginning with the basics, what is Education USA? If you're here, maybe you have attended other sessions with us, um, but it's always good to refresh that Education USA is the official source for information on US higher education. We are a network from the Department of State that promotes um, U.S. higher education through allowing for accurate, comprehensive information on the topic, how to apply, what are some of the steps that I need to take into consideration, sharing resources, doing sessions like this that give you information and allow you to explore your pathway towards an education in the U.S., um, we also do workshops, we work on one-on-one -on -one with students, we share a lot of content and resources on our social media, so we invite you to explore and follow us and also take a look at our YouTube channel that has a lot of content that has been created throughout this virtual times that we have lived in the, in the last couple of years. And so, like I mentioned, we have Chicago Walker and Vivian Marcos with us today. We'll, we'll begin with um, Chicago, who will give us an overview of uh, community colleges, and she'll share some examples. And then Vivian is also going to share her pathway towards studying as an international student at a community college and uh, how that has led to her current uh, development as a professional in the world. So please, thank you, uh, Chicago and Vivi. You can take over now with the content. Thank you, Maria Louise, for the kind introduction. And hola, everybody. It is great to be here. Thank you for inviting us to talk to you today about community colleges. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and share my slides. One second, and here you go. Can everybody see this okay? Yes, perfect. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, let me just slide it over here. Okay, so, so this is us. Uh, my name is Chikako Walker. I am the acting director of San Mateo Colleges of Silicon Valley. I uh, will talk more about uh, our colleges uh, in a little bit. Uh, but today I have uh, asked our former student Vivian to be with me so she can share her student experience with the audience. So we are very excited about this opportunity. Hopefully after this session, you have a little bit more of a clarity about uh, what a community college is in the United States. Okay, so what is a community college? 
And if this was like an in-person presentation, I would have asked the audience, okay, who knows anything about a community college? But today we're not gonna do that. Um, so, so just kind of very briefly, uh, US community colleges were originally established as junior colleges long, long time ago. And it's a very unique system uh, in the US. I have never actually seen anything similar to community college system anywhere else in the world, but I have heard some countries are kind of like replicating the same model in the country. So maybe we will see more community colleges around the world. Uh, the community college system is very unique to the United States. And uh, it is originally established as junior colleges to provide more educational access to community members, right? So uh, community colleges are originally established for the local community members, uh, but since then they have opened the door to the international community members as well. So today we serve uh, not just the local domestic student, but uh, definitely international students from around the world. And many of the community colleges started with a focus on a technical education. However, today, uh, most if not all of the community colleges offer uh, a variety of academic degree programs. And they also provide a transfer program, which I am going to talk about in a little bit. Um, Community colleges also serve as an access point into a four-year university. So this is what I was talking about, like the transfer uh, program. So, uh, so essentially in the United States, when students complete their high school, they have two options for their bachelor's degree, right? So uh, one way is the traditional pathway, uh, which is to apply to a four-year university, get accepted and uh, do their four-year study at a four-year university and uh, get a bachelor's degree. So this is like a traditional pathway, but they have the other option, which is to go to a community college for the first two years. And then after the two years, they transfer to a four year university of their choice for additional two more years. So this is called uh, two plus two. And it works really, really well in the United States because most of the com community colleges in the US, they are accredited public institutions and they have a course articulation agreement with uh, their partner for year universities, meaning that whatever the students take at community colleges, most likely everything will transfer to a four year university that they decide to go to. So this transfer model works really nicely in the United States. And this, this system is called uh, either university transfer pathway or two plus two program. Um, many community colleges do provide technical or vocational training for their students. Uh, so remember community colleges originally started as, um, as, uh, uh, as a vocational school right, for the local community. Um, and we still very much work closely with the local industry as well. So depending on where you go, uh, typically the community college will provide the workforce development and skills training uh, for the type of industry that is, you know, active in the area, right? So for example, uh, my community college, some of the community colleges, we are in the heart of Silicon Valley, San Francisco, California, right? So this means we have a very strong STEM focus, science, technology, engineering, and math. Um, so if you know any of you are interested in those fields, we might be a really good fit because we have this focus on STEM. We have all these high-tech companies in our area. We work really, really closely with the nearby industry readership. Uh, so this means whatever skills training or workforce development courses that we are providing to our student, uh, we make sure that the courses are relevant to our local industry need. Okay, so you see also some figures down here. Uh, today, we have more than 1,000 community colleges in the United States. California alone, uh, we have more than 100 community colleges. So California is you know, where you find a lot of community colleges as well, but 
in the United States, we have more than 1,000 community colleges. And uh, we also enroll more than half of uh, the undergraduate students in the United States. So going to a community college, either for their bachelor's degree or associate degree or certificate, uh, it's a really popular option for American students. And it's also getting increasingly popular with international students as well. So why community colleges, right? If you also have an option to go to a four-year university, especially if you're looking to get a bachelor's degree, why would I bother to go to community college first and then having to transfer to a four-year university? Well, because there are uh, actually quite a few benefits of attending community colleges in the United States. And here are just a few uh, um, highlights, right? So, so first I would like to talk about open access admission. So unlike four-year university, community colleges were founded for local communities, especially for those who do not have the means uh, to go to a four-year university, either financially or academically. So students, you know, they may have struggled in high school, uh, you know, maybe they did not get good enough grades to, to apply and get accepted to a four-year university. Um, they may not have uh, taken the test, the kind of the test that they need for university admissions, right? So, uh, so community colleges were established to, to uh, extend the educational opportunities to those people, um, meaning that when you apply to a community college, there's really no admissions requirement in terms of like uh, academics, right? So for example, there's no SAT requirement. Uh, we don't ask for your ACT score. Uh, our English proficiency level tends to be lower than what is required for a four-year university. Uh, so as long as you put together your documents and apply, most likely you'll be admitted to any of our community colleges. Um, so along with open access admission, uh, I also mentioned the lower TOEFL requirement or lower English requirement, right? So this is, this is one of the major value for international students uh, when they consider coming to the United States for their studies, they have to take TOEFL, IELTS, all these English tests, and they have to meet a certain level, right? Well, we still do, uh, many community colleges, we still do have some English proficiency requirement, but it tends to be uh, significantly lower than four-year universities. So, um, so, you know, getting the English proficiency requirement met and apply and get admitted to community colleges is, is much, much simpler and easier than doing so for a four-year university. Cost of attendance is definitely the highlight for a community college. Um, I don't remember if I had a slide about the tuition comparison, but generally speaking, the tuition fee uh, for community colleges is significantly lower than uh, what is required for a four-year university. It's a fraction of a university tuition, right? So for example, uh, for our community colleges, San Mateo, Co San Mateo Colleges of Silicon Valley, our yearly tuition is about 10,000 US dollars, right, for one year. But if you decide to go to like a private university in the United States, it's gonna be it's gonna be more like fifty thousand U.S. dollars. So it's actually more than double, but you are actually still getting the same education because remember the first two years it's the same, right? You can transfer to any university of their choice after completing uh, your first two years at community colleges. So this is a big saving for international student. Practical work experience and training. So perhaps you have heard of uh, OPT or CPT. So those are, are legal permission for F1 international students studying in the US to, to work in the United States for a certain period, period of time. And uh, my student uh, Vivian can share her experience as an OPT student uh, later on. 
but essentially when students complete their, their degree or academic program, they are eligible to apply for this work permit. So they can stay in the United States and uh, work uh, either up to one year or up to three years if you are in the STEM major. Guess what? This benefit also applies to community colleges as well. So you don't necessarily have to go to a four-year university to do the OPT or to, to be able to work in the United States after graduation. You can always consider coming to a community college first and then either do one year certificate program or a two year associate degree program, apply for OPT and work in the United States for one year. So that is definitely possible. And remember how I talked about community colleges were originally found to train, train local community members for the you know, entry job positions, right? So we are uh, experts in terms of providing uh, relevant skills training to our students for whatever they want to do in the future. So in terms of practical work experience and training, community, there's, there's really no better place than community colleges. And uh, point number five is an increased admission rate to a four-year university. Uh, so this is this is going back to the two plus two program. So if your interest is, you know, to to get a bachelor's degree at a U U.S. university, right? And if you want it to start at the community college level, that's great. Because first of all, you can you know save your your tuition fee for the first two years, right? But Guess what? Actually, you can also increase your chances of getting admitted to your four-year university because uh, when you first come to your community college and study at the community college for two years, when you apply to your four-year university, they are not going to be looking at your high school transcript anymore. You're going to you're going to be seen as a transfer student they'll be looking at your community college transcript for admission. So if you work really hard at your community college, get, get good grades, get great GPA, great point average, and apply to a four-year university, your chances of getting to that universe, getting admitted to that four-year university is much higher than you, know, you as a high school graduate, right? So this is what I mean by increased admission rate to a four-year university. Uh, a lot of uh, community colleges, including us, have partnerships with four-year four universities as well. This means sometimes the four-year university, the partner four-year university can guarantee admission to the transfer students at community colleges with certain admissions requirements. Students will still have to meet the admissions requirement set by the four-year university. But uh, you know, when there is a partnership between the university and the community college, the university actually guarantees, sometimes the university guarantees admissions to the transfer student from the partner community college as long as a student meets the admissions requirements set by the four-year university. So that is a bonus for, uh, for international transfer students. And uh, my last point is the easier transition to the United States higher education system. So look, you know, education system here is very different, right? I was once an international student myself. Everything was so different. I was confused. I don't know where to start. Um, but community colleges are typically smaller. They tend to provide um, more of a wraparound services. Uh, they take your hands uh, to, you know, uh, go through all the steps that you need to take in the, you know, American education system. So it's just an easier transition, especially for international students uh, to the American education system, higher education system. Okay, here's a little chart about pros and cons about, you know, community colleges. Uh, you know, I talked about pros in the previous slide, right? So I talked about the open access admission. Essentially, anybody can, you know, come and study at the at community colleges as long as they apply. 
uh, less stringent English requirements. So, you know, lower TOEFL, uh, you know, there are a variety of options in terms of English, uh, English language proficiency requirement. Um, the school fees, you know, they are much more affordable than at home for universities. Uh, community colleges provide practical work experience and skills training. You have uh, increased chance of getting admitted to a four-year university, especially when there is a partnership between the four-year university and community colleges. And especially for international students, easier transition to the American classroom, right? So this is, I cannot say enough about this. You know, when you go to a four-year university, then tend to be bigger. Uh, you don't have a chance to talk to your professors. You don't know like where to go for support, but community colleges tend to be smaller. Uh, class size is much smaller than the traditional university setting. Uh, there are uh, a multiple support services available. Uh, for international students included. So it's just an easier starting point for international students. And uh, I also talked about uh, OPT opportunities uh, that this work permit for F1 international students. Uh, I said multiple because if you plan to do, let's say associate degree and then bachelor's degree later, you can actually have two OPTs. So let's say you uh, first did an associate degree at one of our colleges, right? You completed your program and then you apply for OPT, you get the permit, you worked one year in the United States, but then you decided to purge your bachelor's degree at a four-year university. You transfer, you do additional two years at that four-year university. And then guess what? After getting a bachelor's degree, you can apply for OPT again. And if you are in the STEM major, you can do more than one year for your OPT. So by going through the community college system, students have an option to do OPT multiple times. So my list of cons, I actually had a hard time coming up with cons, <laughs> but these are some of the things that you might wanna consider uh, if you're interested in coming to a community college. Uh, one is housing. So, so community colleges uh, were originally founded for community members, right? So the assumption was that their students, they don't really need housing support because they live there, right? So um, majority of community colleges in the United States, uh, they do not have on-campus housing like dormitory, right? Uh, a lot of four-year universities do. The community colleges, uh, a very few of them, have on-campus housing. And there's no master's degree program. Uh, sometimes we get students, uh, you know, uh, come to us and say, hey, I'm interested in MBA. I want to do a uh, master's of finances. Uh, we are sorry. <laughs> we do not provide master's degree, uh, but what you can do is if you wanted to prepare for your graduate school admission, uh, you can consider coming to a community college first. So you come to a community college first, you know, practice your English, you know, get accustomed to an American classroom, perhaps some you know, take some courses that are required for your graduate school admissions, and then you apply to a graduate school and move on. You can do that, but community colleges, um, you know, community college itself, it doesn't provide uh, offer a master's degree. Uh, no STEM OPT extension. So, uh, so for OPT, uh, if you are in a science major, you have an option to extend your OPT, but that option is only for a bachelor's degree level or higher. You cannot really extend your OPT for your associate degree or certificate program. And smaller campuses, this can be, you know, uh, this can be good or bad, depending on, you know, what you prefer. But some students, you know, they like to have more varieties in terms of like, let's say athletic teams or student clubs. And uh, it doesn't mean that community colleges do not offer athletic teams or students clubs. Uh, many or all of them actually do. 
but because we are smaller, the scale is not as much as four-year universities. So let's say if you go to like a four-year university, you see all kinds of students, club activities, and all kinds of like athletic teams. But for a community college, uh, the number of these uh, clubs and teams are somewhat limited. Okay. So uh, here is a little bit about our colleges. So we are San Mateo Colleges of Silicon Valley, and uh, we are located right here in San Francisco Bay Area in the state of California. So here you see New York, this side, and we are on the other side. So why would you want to consider some of the colleges of Silicon Valley? As you can see in this map, uh, we are located in uh, ideal locations in California. So first of all, we are three colleges in, in, uh, in the San Francisco Bay Area. We have Skyline College, College of San Mateo, and Canate College. And all of the three colleges are in the center of the Silicon Valley, uh, San Francisco area. So we are close to San Francisco city, San Jose city, close to the beach, close to the airport. Uh, you really have everything in this area. Um, and because of our location, our students are exposed to the internship and OP OPT opportunities with STEM focus. So, so again, if you are interested in the science and technology and uh, engineering and mass field, uh, we are uh, a good options to consider. We have a lot of university transfer partners uh, in the United States and also internationally as well. So remember I talked about the two plus two program and sometimes the transfer uh, is even easier when the community college has a partnership with a four-year university. So guess what? We have more than 140 partners uh, in the United States and outside the United States as well. So students have an option to you know, transfer to any, any of those universities uh, we have partnership with in California, outside California, and we have uh, a few international partners, uh, including Canada, United Kingdom, Australia, and New Zealand. I'm sorry, France. We also offer scholarships to our students. So once you become our students uh, at one of our campuses, students are eligible to apply for more than 50 institutional scholarships. And this opportunity comes every year. So every year we encourage our students to apply for the scholarships. And many of our international students will actually receive some kind of scholarships from our district. We have career counseling and support available for our students. So again, we as community colleges, we are big on workforce development and skills training. And at each of our campuses, we have a career center with career counselors. And then they host the multiple events for our students. They, they connect with the local industry. So they invite people from Google and YouTube and all these, you know, companies that are uh, in our neighborhood uh, so that they can, you know, uh, meet with our students or students can get advice from them and so forth. Uh, for international students, we have a homestay program available as well. So uh, we understand how finding a housing is very challenging, especially for international students. Uh, so if you need any housing assistance, uh, we can connect you with a housing coordinator and she will find you an American home. We also have intensive English program. Um, I mean, as, as community colleges, our English requirement is less stringent to begin with. But if you don't have any TOEFL or you know don't have any IELTS at all, and you want to start with uh, just studying English, we do have the intensive English program uh, that is available to international students as well. 
We also have an online program for international students. So if you're interested in taking like an American classes, but you don't necessarily want to come to the United States or you really can to leave your country at this time, you can sign up for uh, our online classes as a global online learning program student. So we have that distance education program available to our international audience as well. Okay, so that was a quick highlight about community colleges and about some of the colleges of Silicon Valley. Now I want to turn the floor over to uh, to my student Vivian, so she can share her student ex experience. Thank you, Chicago. Hi, everyone. First of all, I would like to thank Education USA and San Mateo Colleges for inviting me to share with you my journey as an international student in the US. And uh, I would like to start with a couple of tips that you definitely need to know before I tell you about what I've done so far here in the US. Uh, basically, 10% of the students are international in colleges and universities in the US. And this is very important for you to know that you are not you are not an outsider. And of course, you want to fit in. I would say just put yourself out and open up conversations with other students. Usually you'll get positive comments about being international. And uh, when you talk to others, they show a lot of interest in your country. And for that reason, I personally ended up forming a stronger roots with Guatemala. After talking with friends, ended up for, um, they, you realized what, what matters more is not where you are from or where you're gonna be. It's really about who you are. The second thing I want to share with you is food. A lot of international students bring food or spices from their home country so they can have their flavors in everything. We, of course, miss our food. I've lived in three states now in the United States, uh, California, South Carolina, and North Carolina. And this country has diversity of cuisines from Asian, Mexican, Italian to Burmese. And you'll also find Guatemalan restaurants and stores as well in the Bay Area. I'll say just prepare yourself to try different flavors because this is one important step to get to know American culture, which is basically diversity. Now, uh, traveling within the US, Guatemala has a lot of nature and it's a beautiful country. But since you will not have any restrictions to travel within the US, I would recommend you to explore national parks and different states so you can get to see how beautiful the United States is as well. And maybe we can go forward with the other one. Thank you. Um, working in the US, as Chicago mentioned the, um, before, in order for international students to come to the US, well, as you know, you need, um, re you require a visa and you get that assistance from EUSA. So you can stay here for a longer period. San Mateo colleges have plenty of opportunities once you're here to work on campus. And that opens up the possibility of getting internships or a job related to your field of study, following of course, all the rules that comes with it. Um, and lastly, I will say, try to make a life in the US after graduation Take all the opportunities you can, go to interviews and put yourself out there to be noticed. It takes a lot of reading, reading, reading and organization, but it's always possible. Now, I want to share with you um, my journey here in the US. I am sharing a couple of pictures and uh, I was born and raised in Guatemala. And you're probably thinking, what if I don't have all the requirements or where would I live? Would I be able to take a bus or drive in the US? And those are natural and valid thoughts. What I would say is don't be afraid, uh, read, and I promise that you'll find answers, answers and nice people along the way. I came to the US in 2018 as an international student at English Language Institute in San Francisco. They have an amazing and professional team that helped me out with uh, getting my USCIS paperwork ready and on time to get a high TOEFL score. I met people from all around the world that were on the same page, just trying to get the most out of this journey. 
San Mateo colleges care um, about the students and that's why they make agreements with English language institutes and also universities in the Bay Area to provide different options to current students to transfer and continue with their education. I will say that the transfer process with them was very simple and straightforward. I actually considered numerous colleges before I took the decision to go to Skyland. Um, and basically I stayed with them because they show interest in me as an individual. Um, I transferred during the pandemic, so everything was uncertain, mostly for international students, since we didn't know if we were going to be able to stay in the U.S. I remember Skyland saying to me, no matter what, we'll support your visa. And security was definitely something I was not getting from other options. So I knew it was my place. So the second picture, that was basically, I studied online until I graduated. I got the opportunity to go to campus like three times probably, but um, the opportunity was always there. I got to work for ISP, which is the International Student Program. I worked online and that was considered an on-campus job. I took care of their social media and marketing for one year. And that's something that I would definitely encourage to do. I come from a middle-class family and they supported me economically uh, because they believe in me, especially my mother. When I got this uh, on-campus job, I started to realize that all the effort was actually paying off. Um, once you are admitted in college, you'll meet a student counselor that makes you aware of all your options. Uh, you, he tries to get you on the correct path and they usually have all the answer. They are pretty awesome on getting you in the correct direction. Um, I graduated in 2022, and due to my GPA score, I was part of the Dean's List of Honor during all the semesters. I was also part of Alpha Gamma Sigma and Phi Theta Gamma Society. Before graduation, I applied for OPT, which is the optional practical permit that Chicago was mentioned. So I had work permit for one year, which helped me out getting the job I currently have. Today, is my first year anniversary at American Airlines, one of the biggest airlines in the world, and I was promoted two times already. I will start a supervisor position next week, and I'm pretty sure that, that there's more to come. And just to wrap this up, I had, if I had to come back and decide to study abroad again, I would do it with closed eyes. This opportunity has given me a strength and a huge professional growth. Well, I thank you all for listening. I hope my experience as an international student helps you having a better understanding of what is uh, to study abroad and all the things that you can achieve. Thank you so much, Vivian, for sharing your personal journey. You were amazing as a student and you are amazing today. Thank you so much for sharing your story with us and with the uh, international audience today. So that is it for our presentation. And if we have time, we are happy to answer any of the questions that you may have. Absolutely. Thank you both so much for your um, valuable information that you shared, your experience, and all the content that, um, that is very relevant to understanding the, the way community colleges work and what they can contribute to students, especially Guatemalan students. We have some questions, and um, I'll start with one that's pretty simple. Uh, Chicago, could you explain to us what is OPT? Yeah, so OPT, it stands for Optional Practical Training. And this is a special work permit. It's a work permission from the United States government to F1 visa international students studying in the United States. So basically, after you complete your academic program, you graduate, you have an option to apply for this special permit called OPT. You do have to apply, you have to put together your paperwork and you apply uh, usually with the support from your school. And then the US government 
they review your information, they review your documents, and usually within a couple of months, they give you uh, the approval, right? And uh, personally, um, you know, my seven years time at our community college district, we have never received a denial uh, for our students. So as long as you have completed your you know, eligible academic program at your college, most likely your OPT application will be approved, but you will have to work closely with your advisor at your community college. Thank you, Chicago. And here it's also relevant to say the, the professional experience that you're seeking has to be related to the field that you're studying. Exactly. So, it ha there has to be coherence in that sense. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Your employment must be directly related to your major. So, for example, Vivian, she was a business student. So, uh, her her work at American Airlines is is completely relevant to what she studied at Skyline College. Yeah. Thank you. Um, another question is, at what age is it recommended to apply and attend a community college? Is there an age range? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the, the minimum age requirement is 16 years old. So you must be at least 16 years old, but we don't really have any other age limit for admission. So as long as you're 16 and older, you can always apply to a community college. However, uh, if you are under 18 years old, and if you did not complete your high school, you have to wait until you turn 18 years old. I hope okay. that makes sense. So either 16 or older or and have finished high school? Yeah. Okay. And if you have not finished high school, you have to be at least 18 years old. Okay, got it. Um, Another question is to for Vivian. Vivian, how did you end up choosing Skyline College and how did you go about that? Um, well, I have studied English first and I decided to go to a Skyline because they have uh, different programs that you can choose from. And also the fact that they have three campuses, it opens up more opportunities. And uh, as I said before, it was a, I did it during the pandemic. So it was uh, very difficult to get a security with a visa at that moment. And uh, they were very close to me and with all the process. So I decided to work with them because I felt that I was able to talk with them directly when I needed to do it. And uh, because it was a very personal uh, experience with them instead of all the other colleges. All right, thank you. Um, Chicago, we have a question from someone who already graduated from university in Guatemala, but mm -hmm. they would like to study in the US as well. They ask, can I study at a community college and what kind of documents do they have to give? So maybe you can give us an overview. I know you mentioned some of the requirements, but maybe can you explain can a person who already has a, a university degree study at a community college? And um, what kind of maybe summary of the requirements and documents that they may need? Yeah, absolutely. So anybody 16 years old plus can apply to a community college. And because we have this open admission policy, this is all community colleges in the United States, right? Uh, our admissions process is really, really simple, especially when you compare this to a four-year university. So typically, you would have to submit some kind of English proficiency documents, right? So this can be your TOEFL, IELTS, Duolingo, or whatever else that your community college accepts. Uh, for example, our colleges take TOEFL, IELTS, Duolingo, Pearson's uh, language third, we have a few other English language proficiency options. And our scores are much lower than what's required for like UC Berkeley or San Francisco State University or Stanford University, right? So for example, if it's TOEFL, it's only 56. 
and IELTS is 5.5, Duolingo is 85. And other community colleges, they have similar requirement. Uh, most of us have some kind of English language requirement, but it's usually much lower than uh, what's required for, for university. Uh, you will be asked to submit academic transcript, uh, but again, like if you did not complete your high school and if you are 18 years old or older, you don't necessarily have to submit your high school transcript. Uh, if you have it, submit it anyway, uh, but it's, it's, not like the, uh, it's not like a must document that you have to submit if you are at the certain age or older. Uh, you do have to submit your bank statement or bank letter uh, to apply for F1 visa. So this is not so much for the college admissions, but we as a community college, in order to accept F1 international students, we do have to ask for proof of finances. So for the community college admissions, uh, students will be asked to show proof of finances uh, in the forms of you know, a bank letter or bank certificate or bank statement. And each college would uh, say specifically how much you would have to show in the US dollars. And this is typically what's required for the first one year living and studying in the United States. So English document, some kind of academic transcript, uh, financial document, and we would also ask for a copy of your passport because once you are admitted, the, second, the next step is to issue you what's called Form I-20. And this is, uh, this, is, this is an immigration document that you need. Uh, to come to the United States. Uh, you also need this document to apply for F1 international student visa. So in order for us to issue you that legal document, we would need a copy of your passport. So those are the typical documents that most community colleges would ask for. Depending on the college, they might ask for additional things, uh, but those are the essential four. Thank you, thank you, Chikako. And I would like to add, um, to remember, you, you, as, an, as an international student you, uh, that's interested in the US, you have to remember there are thousands of universities and community colleges in the US. And Chicago just shared maybe a standard amount of requirements, but each university may have different requirements. And so Education USA would recommend that you establish your options, the ones you want to apply to, and verify in their website what are some of the requirements they have for your application process so that you can prepare accordingly and have everything in place for your uh, successful application process. So make sure that you explore their websites, read everything they have there. And if you still have questions, um, I would I always recommend to reach out, but also have questions that are more in depth, you know, not just do you have financial aid or not, you know, include other questions that are um, representative of your personality, of your character, of your contribution as a student, as a potential student at this school, because that is your letter of presentation, you know, that's the first impression that you're going to give with that email, and that's always important to keep in mind. Um, another question now talking about financial aid a little bit. You mentioned Chicago, there is some financial aid, for example, at the San Mateo colleges, but how does financial aid, is there financial aid available at community colleges? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the term financial aid is used specifically for, for domestic student in the United States. So when you talk, when you start talking about financial aid, some colleges may say, no, we don't have financial aid for international students. But that does not mean they don't have scholarships for international students. Uh, for example, at our colleges, financial aid is specifically for local American students. But we do have more than 50 institutional scholarships available to international students. So this is different, right? Uh, so make sure you know you use the term scholarship when you ask this question to different institutions. And um, 
you know, it really depends on the school. Um, you know, some colleges, they do have some scholarships for international students. Some even have scholarship only for international students. Um, so it really depends. You kind of do have to do your research to find out about the scholarship opportunities at the community college that you are looking at. But some of the colleges, uh, some of the colleges of Silicon Valley, we offer institutional scholarships to all of our students actually. So as long as they are enrolled in one of our three campuses, every year they have a chance to apply for a scholarship. And um, we have an online system for the scholarship application. So students, they need to submit only one application every year. So they submit one application, one set of application with their essay and recommendation letter, click to submit online, and the scholarship committee will just match this application against the different scholarships. So you don't have to apply for individual scholarships like 10 times, 20 times. You submit one, one scholarship application, the committee will take care of the list. And five, six months later, the committee will announce well, actually, it's more like three months. Uh, a couple months later, the committee will announce, okay, you have, you know, received, you know, you have been selected for this scholarship, you have been selected for that scholarship, you will receive the notice. And sometimes students receive multiple scholarships at a time. So that is also, you know, something to consider. Also, I wanna talk about the transfer scholarship opportunities. Uh, when we work with our international students for transfer, we always encourage them to look into the transfer scholarship opportunities. Because, uh, you know, the first two years, it might be affordable, but they still need two more years, right, uh, for their bachelor's degree, and then they need to figure out how they're going to finance their studies. Um, so, uh, so we always, you know, encourage students to look into, like, different options and look into even private institutions they did not maybe think about because they think they're just too expensive for them. But very often, private institutions are the ones that have money, right? <laughs> so, so a lot of private institutions, they actually are very generous and offer transfer scholarships to international students. And many of our international students that we have had, they transfer to various types of institutions in California, outside California, with a really good amount of scholarship. All right, thank you. And that, that actually leads me to, to this next question, which is, if I want to do that, the transfer, right, the two plus two format, can a student transfer to any four-year college after uh, any four-year institution after doing their two years at a community college? Or um, is it recommended to explore the you know, alliances or, or agreements there are between the community colleges and four-year institutions prior to deciding where to attend uh, the community college? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a very good question. And uh, this is where our counselors come in, right? So community colleges, we have uh, people who are called counselors. So they are um, advisors and they are professionals uh, with counseling degree and um, their job is to work with every single uh, students on campus to achieve their career or academic goal, right? So every semester students are actually required to meet with a counselor, it's one-on-one to make sure that they are taking the correct courses, right courses for their academic or career goal. So that's one thing. And uh, also they will work with our students to determine the student's transfer destination. So students will first share what they would like to study, what they would like to achieve for their career, what schools they might be interested in, what they, where they wanna be what needs they have, right? Can they afford the four-year university? Do they have enough money? Do they like rural areas, city areas, and so forth, right? So counselors really work closely with international students to determine their transfer destination. 
And definitely, if your community college has partnership or agreement with four-year university, that's the easiest route to because everything is articulated already. So counselors will know clearly what courses that you need to take to transfer to that four-year university. But that being said, uh, students can transfer to a four-year university that's outside the agreement or partnership if they want to, right? For example, we have some students who likes to do, who, who want to be nurse. And uh, because nursing programs are often very impacted, their choices are kind of limited. And sometimes they, they have to pursue, um, you know, a four-year university that's outside California, they are not a partner university, but their nursing program is less impacted, so they want to apply. It's completely fine to pursue that, and it's possible. They just need to uh, work with their counselor really closely, so that counselors can, you know, do some, you know, research, learn more about this university, and find out what courses will transfer to that four-year university. So you may want to start earlier, especially if you're going to like a non-partner university, um, but uh, it is possible to, to apply and to get admitted to a non-partner four-year university. Okay, thanks. And, um, and yeah, I think that's, that's most of the questions we we got i think it's important to remind everyone who attended or everyone who's going to watch this in the future that it is important that you do your job as a student and do your research we as education usa and the representatives of the higher education institutions in the us are here to support you to guide you but you need to do your your part as well my recommendation is to definitely take a deep, deep, deep look at every institution's website, explore it. And then if you still have questions, draft them in an email and make sure that they are a good representation of you as a potential student before you send them. Um, get in touch with, this, with the schools on social media, make sure that you get to know their personalities, what they have to offer. Remember that it's important for you as a student to find what is be the best fit for you, not to change yourself to fit the schools because there's thousands of them and that would be really hard to manage. So um, remember this session is gonna be available on Facebook and on YouTube. You can look us up as uh, Education USA Guatemala. And thank you so much Chicago and Vivian for being here with us this afternoon. It was a real pleasure. And I think this session is gonna be um, a great resource for the future. And uh, thank you so much. Now, thank you so much for this opportunity. It was great meeting you virtually. Absolutely. And to everyone who joined us, make sure that you reach out to us or take a look at the content that we have created and shared with you on our social media and our YouTube page. So have a great afternoon, Bibi. Good luck with everything. And thank you so much for the invitation. Yeah, thanks. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye. Thank you.